The head of Microsoft Studios, Matt Booty, recently said that Halo stumbled across the finish line to get the game out, which kind of would make sense. In a recent podcast with Friends Per Second, which is hosted by Skill Up here on YouTube, recently talked with Matt Booty and kind of sat down. They actually talked a bit about Halo and some various games as well. So what I decided to do is actually listen to it the whole like you know segment they talked about halo specifically so i'm gonna break it down for you guys so you have to listen to the entire podcast so if you guys like these news and informational type of videos make sure you tap that like button as it really does help out the video and channel in that all famous youtube algorithm and make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details so we know right now that halo infinite is not exactly thriving though we do have the winter update which is gonna be massive around the corner guys which i do plan to release a video talking about everything you need to know about this update which is pretty massive not gonna lie, but they talk about how Infinite honestly launched in a good state, and I would agree with that. Maybe not super content rich that we've had in previous games, but compared to the market, it did pretty well. It made Battlefield 2042 look terrible. It looked way more exciting than Call of Duty Vanguard, so they had a perfect opportunity to capitalize on it, but people got bored of the game quickly because of the lack of content, honestly, and the lack of support that the game received post-launch. And like they mentioned, they had 20 plus million players playing Halo Infinite, which is fantastic for the game. But then it quickly dropped off because, well, we didn't really have any cool, new, exciting experiences to have with the game. And they mentioned that per specifically within this podcast. Matt Booty said that these days with a game like Halo Infinite, shipping the game is just the beginning. There has got to be a plan for content sustain. There has got to be a plan for regular continuing engagement. And we just fell short of that plan on that. Pretty obvious with that statement as the updates have been pretty slow with Halo Infinite. Like right now, we're still dealing with the ping server issues right now. BTP was literally unplayable for an entire month. And besides store updates, we didn't really get much in the way of content or new things to do in the game. And when we did get new things, it was like Fiesta, SWAT, stuff that we've been playing in Halo for 20 years. You can't release two maps within the first entire year of a live service game to really truly call it a live service. I think it just kind of shows that 343 really just tried their best just to get the game out the door. I mean, they do mention within this as well that they talked about like the pandemic and the lingering effects of that, especially with a large studio like 343 and the corresponding studios that work with the supporting of Halo Infinite. Matt Booty even said that finishing Halo Infinite during the pandemic represented a worst case scenario with hundreds of developers working across the world remotely to finish a big AAA game. With Microsoft's company-wide hiring freeze, there are no positions available at 343 for them to add on new talent permanently. Like literally the launch of Halo Infinite was probably one of the worst times to launch a game like ever in gaming history. That final year is so crucial for a game to really kind of finally come together because it's all just kind of these separate parts that are kind of vaguely moving together until like the last year when you still finally solidify what you're going to release for the game and then it just finally comes together right at the end and then they release it. But literally as things were starting to come together Together, they all kind of fell apart because the pandemic just kind of shook everything up. And even the war in Ukraine affected the development of Halo Infinite as they had a support studio called Sparasov, which is a Russian based company, which helped out with a lot of blocking out when it comes to like the rudimentary building of multiplayer maps for Halo Infinite. Well, with the sanctions against Russia, they had to kind of cut ties with those people, so that was another wrench in the whole system. So like the odds just keep stacking against 343 and Halo Infinite to truly exceed and accomplish what they really want to do with the game. Matt Booty did say that 343 has now retrenched themselves into developing the game, as we've heard from 343 previously that they needed to slow down before they could start running. Now there have been a lot of rumors that the game engine has a lot of tech debt behind it, basically a lot of intertangled things that where if you need to go back and fix it, you need to unravel the whole thing before you can even think about creating content or doing new things with it. Which would sound to make sense as there are still plenty of bugs still within Halo Infinite that haven't been addressed since the launch of the game even. And the release of new content has been a trickle at best. Though with the winter update coming right around here guys, it does seem like things are starting to ramp up to be a bit better for us players. And even the employees of 343 are stating this live on Twitter. With the community director Sketch saying things like, work is ongoing, velocity has increased, and it's truly all hands on deck. Community writer Alex Wakeford, or RK known as Harispas, said that, that it all feels to him like it's the first major step in a great leap forward for Halo Infinite. One of the playlist designers at 343 said, it's happening, we are finally getting there. 
What an exciting time to get involved. Matt Booty said about Halo Infinite in the right here, right now, that they're working on quality of life for the game and getting in a regular cadence of content, getting back to that, which it does seem like we're starting to get to that route, right? With the entire studio of 343 focusing on the live service. I mean, they even had to cut the finishings of co on, you know split screen co-op campaign to focus on the live service so then they can actually get people like excited about playing the game again. And we had the winter update, which really could be considered a season, but it's not being considered that because there are like no narrative events tied to it, which is what really ties into a whole new season. As we've covered previously on the channel, 3 for 3 is viewing these seasons as a way to continue the story of Halo Infinite because the whole team is all hands on deck to get the live service up to date. It's slowing down the production of like a new campaign experience, which they are currently still working on. Obviously, it's much more in the early stages, so I wouldn't expect a new campaign to launch at best until late 2024, most likely 2025. And we see that they're trying to get the studio into the rhythm of seasonality with the winter update. Like we said, that's coming around the corner here. And then March, about four months later, coming around with the Echoes Within, that'd be a full new season with a new narrative event and, and new maps from developers tied into it. And then we should see this start to be the true cadence of new content coming into the game. Obviously, this is all kind of pre-planned and stuff like that. We've seen some leaks and rumors about stuff coming for like season four and five and six kind of moving forward. Uh, we've covered that previously on the channel as well. But this video is more just talking about like the reaction from the head of Microsoft Studios talking about Halo Infinite in a very honest, candid fashion, which I do appreciate that openness because we can all see what's going on with Halo Infinite. It's not the best situation. Now, it certainly could be a lot worse, but it definitely could be a lot better. But yeah, it's gonna take some time to get to that better state. So going on Twitter or something like that and then tweeting out bad Steam numbers and just being like, oh, why is this game doing so poorly? it's not going to help anything and it's not going to speed up anything either. So it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, we just need some time and some patience. But I truly do believe from what I've seen from 343 and what they stated and I've seen from the cadence of new updates coming to the game, that I believe by the end of 2023, guys, we really should see Halo Infinite going at full steam ahead, creating new content and hopefully leading towards that rumored Tatanka Battle Royale mode, most likely releasing early 2024 from all the leaks and rumors that I've seen about that mode, because you definitely need to have Halo Infinite up and running in a good state before you release that Battle Royale, because that's gonna bring a huge influx of players into the game. And if you get a bunch of people coming into the game the way it is playing right now, it's going to come back to the same situation that we had at launch where a lot of people jump in, they get excited, they play, then they come with frustrations or get bored with it, and then they hop right back off. And of course, I will be with you guys along this entire journey for Halo Infinite. So if you guys want some more Halo news, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I recently talked about how my Halo Infinite prayers have been answered. If you want to know what that is, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.